iPad OS 26 is making it so much easier to get work done on my iPad Pro. The menu bar is giving me much quicker access to the controls that I like. The new windowing system is much smoother for multitasking. And even simple things like the pointer being a pointer make it so much easier to do work on my iPad. Hey everyone, Tech Dad here, and I've recently upgraded my M4 iPad Pro to iPad OS 26. And now I can really see the good hardware meshing with a good operating system to give you the most productivity that you should have with a device like this. It's really bringing the iPad Pro to the level that people thought it should be at for work. So you have the menu bar, you have better multitasking, and even Safari works a whole lot better with apps like Google Docs and Smartsheet. It's actually functioning like a desktop browser and not a mobile browser. So in this video, I wanna show you how I use iPad OS 26 and my M4 iPad Pro to get my work done every day as a project manager. I wanna show you my setup, which really gives me a Mac-like feel. It's almost like having an iMac with a second display. It's really nice. And then I wanna demo some of those new features of iPad OS 26. 26 to show you how I actually use it in my workflow. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so first let's talk about my most current setup. So I am deep in the Apple ecosystem. I pretty much use Apple everything all the time. And now that my iPad Pro is functioning more like a Mac, I'm able to set it up more like a Mac. So I used to like to have my iPad Pro very close to me. I had to use a lot of the touch controls. I still do that sometimes, but now with all the options of multitasking in that new menu bar, I feel like I'm able to set my iPad away from me a little bit more often. I can set it on this magnetic stand and and have it next to my studio display and it's just a great setup to see what's going on and see all my windows. My Apple studio display is awesome. It's 27 inches. It's 5k. It's got a built-in webcam that I use all the time for my web conferencing. It's just a great pair with the iPad Pro. Now I do want to talk about this stand that I have my iPad on. So this video today is actually sponsored by the company Banks and they have provided this stand for me to do a demonstration. And I've actually had a lot of people on my channel ask about a stand like this one where you can make the iPad more like a monitor and just sit it back next to your other displays and work on it that way. And this stand delivers exactly that. So it is a magnetic stand, which is what I really love about it. It's very convenient that it just magnetizes to the stand and you can take it on and off really quickly. The stand is honestly really solid quality and it should be because you want your iPad to not fall off of this thing or tip over and break. It's got two joints here and they are really solid. So you're able to position your iPad the way that you want. I would recommend that you position the stand first before you put your iPad on it. I wouldn't recommend pushing really hard on the iPad screen as you're trying to adjust this solid stand. It also has a little swivel to it so you can hear the clicking as it moves around. This is actually really nice especially if you wanted to flip your iPad around and show somebody across the desk some content and then you can easily just bring it back around again. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check this product out as well as a link to other Binks products so you can check out their Amazon site. They have other things like Kevlar cases. I don't know if you've been looking into those, but Kevlar is this super durable, super light material that makes for a perfect iPad or iPhone case. And so they provided this one here. And so it's just really solid and really light. And I actually really like this case because it has no front cover. So this is good for me when I'm teaching in the classroom. I can have the back protection that I want, but I don't have to deal with the flippy flopness of a front cover. So I'll leave a link for this as well. All right, so next let's talk about this menu bar and how it's helped helping me do real work and productivity. So of course this menu bar is fashioned very much after the Mac menu bar. You just have to scroll up to the top of the screen and it will appear. And so it works differently for all kinds of different apps. So let's talk about the notes app first. So in the menu bar for notes, you can do things like pull up a new note, for example, which is really handy. You can also activate other things like dictation. So it's really quick and easy to pull up these functions. Now I also like the menu bar because it shows the keyboard shortcuts for each of the items that's really nice so if you want to pull up dictation you don't actually have to go to the menu bar you can just hit function D and start dictating so it's nice that they give you that extra information in the menu bar I really love the menu bar in Safari so one of my favorite things about the menu bar for Safari is that you can quickly open a new window you can also drag Safari up from the dock but I just think that the menu bar is a little bit more accessible and a little bit quicker so you can just go up there grab a new window
window and start some new work. I love being able to open a few new windows at a time and work on Google Docs, for example. Because Safari works so much better, Google Docs actually functions the way it should. The menu bar for Safari also quickly offers you your history, so you can quickly go back to a site that you just visited a few tabs ago. That's really nice and convenient. Another cool thing you can do in the menu bar is arrange your tabs. And so there is a selection to arrange your tab by title, and it will alphabetize your tabs for you. I think that's really awesome because I get a whole lot of tabs going at once and I get kind of lost on where they are. So it's actually really nice to have them alphabetized. Now, the menu bar isn't quite fleshed out for third-party apps yet. So if you look at the one for Microsoft Word, there's not a whole lot going on there. But since Safari is fleshed out, you can open up Word in Safari through OneDrive and take advantage of the menu bar there. So for example, I can grab some text from some other application and paste it and match style in my Word document. I really love that. Makes the web app version of Word really nice. I go back and forth on which version of the Microsoft apps I like better, either the web version or the applications. I don't know. I'm going to let that menu bar get a little bit more fleshed out before I make a decision. Okay, next, let's talk about multitasking and that new pointer. So the pointer is actually a really big deal. It's not just so you have something that's better to look at than that circle. It's actually for functionality. So one of the big complaints about the iPad was it's always difficult to work on web apps that were meant to work on a computer like Smartsheet or Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. If you actually want to get some precision to pull down on a cell to copy data, that used to be kind of difficult to do, especially with your finger and with that little round cursor. But now that you have a pointer, you can easily see what you're grabbing and pull it down. Windows are clean and easy to manage on the screen. And again, that menu bar comes in handy so you can shape and resize your windows or you can put them on your secondary display or back to the iPad again. So it's very easy to get one app on the right side of your screen and another on the left using the menu bar. Or you can use the three dots in the corner which come from the Mac concept and this is just so nice as well to have those buttons there now. So when I'm working I very much feel like I'm working on a Mac. It's nice to be able to put files on the dock as well so I can quickly grab a PDF for example and just grab some text out of it or do what I need to do. So I actually feel like I'm being more productive when I'm working on my iPad Pro with a secondary display with all this new functionality. It's actually really good. It's still a little buggy, so you need to give it some time to work the bugs out. I was hesitant to download it on my main iPad, but I thought, well, I need to go ahead and give it a shot. But I'm looking forward to where they work some of the bugs out. I mean, sometimes things just don't copy paste right or an app crashes, things like that. So we're still in that beta. So give it a little more time if you're thinking about downloading downloading it. All right, so that's how I'm using some of the new features so far. I think it's great. I love the more Mac-like experience that you get, but I still have my iPad as an iPad. I can take it off of the stand and still use it as my consumption device. I can use it as my whiteboard in the classroom. It's still serving those other functions while completely replacing a MacBook for me. Let me know if you have any questions about anything I've said in this video today. I'm happy to help you out. Leave a comment below. That's all I got for you. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.